We are honoured today to have as our commencement speaker, Mr. Mark, uh, Matt Schatz. Matt, uh, Matt graduated from Trinity in 1998 with a Master's of Arts in teaching degree. After teaching for a while, he became one of the first 20 rackers, as you all know, that is somebody who works at Rackspace, a San Antonio-based uh, cl uh, cloud computing company founded by Trinity students. He quickly became a great salesperson and ultimately led one of the biggest sales teams at Rackspace. He went on to run Rackspace's European sales team out of the London office, followed by a tour in Hong Kong. After 10 years at Rackspace, Matt spent a year doing volunteer work in Southeast Asia, again teaching English at orphanages, Buddhist monasteries in Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, India, Bangladesh and Burma. He is currently general manager of retail and emerging markets at Bazaar Voice in Austin. It is with great pleasure that I welcome Mac, Matt Schatz to the podium. Matt. Good morning. First off, I'm unbelievably grateful, privileged, and honored to be speaking with you this morning. Congratulations to all the graduates. Your hard work and efforts have resulted in this special day. Sitting in this very chapel 15 years ago, awaiting my master's diploma, I really thought I knew it all. I had a vision of my future. I thought I had it all planned out. Now, when I think back to myself 15 years ago, I can't believe how dumb I really was. If I could go back in time, here are some of the things that I wish I could tell myself. The degree you receive today is a key. It's a key that is going to open doors for you as it did for me. It was the key to my first job out of college as a sixth grade social studies teacher. It might be a key to a job promotion or a job change. However, it's only a key. It's what you do after that's up to you. This degree does not entitle you to anything beyond holding a master's degree. What your degree shows is that you've learned how to learn. Trinity has done a fantastic job preparing you. But now is when the real learning starts. One thing I've learned is that life is completely unpredictable. Plan for the future, but live in the present. Plan but don't worry about deviating from that plan. Those deviations will define you, will inspire you, they will make you who you are. 15 years ago today, I was confident that my life would be as a career teacher. I had no idea that one day I'd be living in Burma, building an orphanage, or that through a chance meeting at Trinity my freshman year, I'd one day be part of an unbelievable idea with Rackspace Managed Hosting. Now, I've got some bad news for you. You all are going to fail, and you're going to fail a lot. There are going to be some minor screw-ups, and there are going to be some major ones. A person that hasn't failed hasn't lived. The challenge for you is what do you do with those failures? Do you hide from them, or do you embrace them? Do you learn from them, or do you pretend they never happened? I could be here all day long talking about all the times I've failed, and there have been some epic ones. From job failures, company failures, financial failures. I've tried to learn from every single one of them to bounce back and hit the next challenge with even more strength. Fail quickly and learn. You'll be so much better equipped to handle more of life's challenges. Part of not being afraid to fail means taking risks, and I urge you to take risks in your life. These risks will also help define who you are. They make you incredibly interesting, and they give you such a better understanding as to who you are as a person. On that fateful day back in 2000, when my buddy Pat from Trinity gave me the opportunity to join a small startup that was bleeding cash, the opportunity to take a pay cut from teaching, with no, <laughs> 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 no, 
no health insurance, no vacation, with the company name that was too often confused with rack room shoes. <laughs> I took a risk. That company Rackspace now does over a billion dollars a year in business, employs well over 6,000 people worldwide. Part of taking risks also means taking action. Don't be a matter of circumstance. We are all here on this earth for such a precious short time, and it goes by too quickly to stand on the sidelines. Do what you love, and don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about how much money you can make, vacation time, the benefits, or so many other things that keep people from doing what they love. Life will pass you by. When you do what you love, everything else takes care of itself. At the end of my tenure at Rackspace, the company had grown to such a big size that it started to become a job. It was a great job, and unless I did something really stupid, I wasn't going to get fired. But I no longer loved it. I was making a good salary. I was living in a beautiful apartment in Hong Kong. But I decided to walk away. I needed to take a new risk in my life and find something that I really loved. I had allowed myself to start standing on the sidelines in life. I was chasing meaningless material possessions as some sort of sign of success. With everything that I had, I never felt so empty. I was in a bad place and it was time to take action. So I decided to head to Lao and I started teaching English to novice Buddhist monks. Every time I've made a major life change, be it moving to a new city, a new job opportunity, or starting a new volunteer project, the reaction I've received from most of my friends typically started like this. I'd love to do that, but, or I'd really like to do something like that, but I've consistently and sadly been amazed at how many of these butt people are out there. Don't live your life as a butt person. <laughs> it goes back to taking risks. It goes back to not being afraid to fail. And it also means doing your part to positively impact the world around you. It doesn't mean you've got to jump on a plane to Southeast Asia. It means looking at your community and deciding to make an impact. Let those actions define who you are. Leave this world a better and more interesting place for being there. This also means living a life filled with selflessness and servitude. You all have the opportunity to be great leaders, and many of you already are. Lead with courage and always remember to serve those you lead. When it comes to selflessness, I've learned that it's a funny thing. The more selfless you are, the more you'll grow and the more you'll be given. I remember when I first moved to Burma, I lived amongst some unimaginable poverty. As we began to build a school for a local village, I thought I was the epitome of selflessness and sacrifice. I went there to help them. I was successful. I had a home in San Antonio, apartments in London and Hong Kong, a nice car, the latest gadgets. On paper, it was a great story. I thought I knew what happy was. It was my turn to give back. But that changed incredibly quickly the more I was able to interact with the villagers. I remember their smiles, their laughter, their sense of community. Seeing amazing acts of selflessness on a daily basis as they struggled to survive. Seeing joined faces as orphans were held, food was shared, and shirts were literally given off of backs. I was learning what selflessness and happiness really meant. I hope that each of you find this level of happiness as you lead a life of selflessness and servitude. Now, while I was in Burma, I was invited to spend time with a very remote tribe of people near the border of Bangladesh. After I arrived, the men of the village wanted to take me monkey hunting. Now, I'm not a hunter, and I'm pretty fond of monkeys, um, so I was, uh, I was pretty reluctant, but I finally relented. Now, the first order of the business was for the men to take me to the river's edge, strip me down completely naked, 
and cover me in mud. Now, this was to act as a sort of bug repellent and to their great laughter, give me some camouflage so I looked a little bit more like them. Uh, we climbed up into the mountains and after a few hours, we took a break. We sat in a circle. I had my back up against a tree and through my translator, we started talking about life in the West. Now, I was eager to tell them about the internet. I wanted to show them my iPad. But the chief hit me with some amazing questions. Questions about the love in his village compared to the love in my village. About the deep level of friendships in his village compared to my village. He even alluded to things like daycare, retirement homes, things he couldn't quite understand. He ended up by asking which society is truly more developed. I had gone there to give back, but it was this tribe and their chief that it really opened my eyes to what's truly important in life. As a side note, after this last question, I responded that he was so right, right in so many ways I'd never imagined. I thought the chief would like my response, but as my translator was translating, the chief looked to the person to his left, then to his right, and gave them a slight nod. At that point, both of these men put a blow dart into their blow guns and pointed them right at me. <laughs> now, I panicked. My first thought was, I've got a really bad translator. <laughs> I turned to my translator and said, what the heck is going on? He said, Matt, don't move. The chief nodded again to the two guys, and I saw them take in a huge breath of air, and two poison-tipped darts went sailing right above my head. The next thing that happened is an enormous dead python with two blow darts in its head fell right into my lap. I have never moved so quickly in my life, complete with me jumping up and down and doing the it touch me dance. <laughs> but in that brief moment, those guys showed me love, they showed me kindness, and they showed me courage. What started off as a trip about selflessness turned into an 18 month journey with a debt of gratitude I will never be able to repay the people of Laos, Cambodia, Burma. Make selflessness and servitude hallmarks of your life, to your family, to your friends, to coworkers, and to strangers. You are all the lucky ones. You've earned an incredible degree. You're blessed with people here today and people who couldn't be here but are thinking of you right now who will love you and support you no matter the successes or failures in your life. Make sure you give those people a hug today and once again tell them thank you. I've been blessed uh, with an incredible mom who's supported me through thick and thin and she's actually here today. These are the people we all need in our lives, so never turn your back on them. Congratulations once again. Go out there and live a life with meaning and make a positive difference in the lives of others.